Are you ready to quit your nine to five and pursue your passion full time? We'll show you how. Create a business doing what you love. You're listening to the Quit Your Nine to Five podcast with your hosts, Tamisha and Damian Duncan. Okay, so hello and welcome everybody to another amazing episode of the Quit Your 9 to 5 podcast show. We have some beautiful, beautiful women that are going to be our guests today. We're taking a little bit different, not even about the Quit Your 9 to 5, but we're talking about being a boss mom. And I know that there are a lot of people out there that are boss moms. I know I am one of them. These kids drive me crazy, but I love them dearly and I run a business. So I know what that means. These ladies have a movement. It's called the Boss Mom Nation. I know you heard of them. I know you've seen them all over social media. So we're going to be digging into their brain today. So welcome Sha and Aaliyah to the show. Hello, ladies. Hello, Brittany. Hello. Hello. I'm about to call you Brittany. Excuse me. Hi. <laughs> so I'm excited to have all of you, all of you. I'm excited to have both of you on the show. I know that every question that I'm going to ask you ladies and my husband will probably ask is going to be coming from within because we're parents and being a boss and being a mom and dads that listen is a struggle. And yeah. I love to get your perspective on a lot of things. And so first I want to start off by having you ladies kind of introduce and tell us what is the Boss Mom Nation? What does that represent? Who wants to go? Okay, so the boss mom originated really because the only image for motherhood out there was a soccer mom. Like once you became a mom, everybody wanted to kind of squeeze you onto this little soccer mom identity and you just just lost yourself. But we live in a time and age where women are really doing it big. You know, they're multitasking. They're the boss of their homes. It's outside of just being able to be a business owner. Although that is the main underlying concept of it. A lot of women nowadays, they are, I call it the, the year of the female entrepreneur that we're just really getting up and starting our own business. So it's just the multitasking, go-getting woman that is a mother and who has not lost herself. And she takes pride in being who she used to be before she became a mother. She just knows that now that she is a mother, it's just made her a little bit more doper in a sense. Mm-hmm. So, um, and she doesn't lose sight of that. And with Boss Mom Nation, we have built a community around that. So our main focus is to really just provide a platform where women can come and get the real resources they need to overcome all the trials and tribulations of motherhood and find a sisterhood in it as well. As well. That's awesome. And I, I'm glad that you said that actually, Aaliyah, because... Back in the day, you had to choose. You know, it was like you could you had to be a stay-at-home mom or you worked full-time. You couldn't, you know, juggle both. And if you did, it was like you would look down upon, like, how can you possibly be a good mom and you're never home or you're an entrepreneur or you're doing these things? And, you know, now, like you said, women are killing it out there. You know, We're we are... A lot of women are the breadwinners in their household. A lot of women are the head of household for them, even single moms. And they have businesses and not even just people who have businesses, but just having a career and being a mom and embracing that instead of feeling bad about it and having to, you know, make certain decisions where you feel like you have to choose one or the other. No, you don't have to choose. You can be both of those things. So I'm glad that you shared that. I'm excited to learn more about the movement. So what do you guys have going in your business right now? Do you have, like, do you do coaching or do you sell products? Or tell us a little bit about how you guys make your money in your business. Okay, well, right now we are revamping everything. We originally kind of started out as a t-shirt company and a blog, you know, and that's kind of becoming very redundant in social media period. So we had to figure out a way to build ourselves outside of that. So that's what we're doing right now. We just hired nine women on our team. Wow. Which is crazy, right, Sha? Yeah. So, <laughs> and it's just to be able to make major changes. So we have a few things coming up 2017. Uh, one of them is called the Hustle Series. Now, the Hustle Series is to identify women that are are in business, mothers that are in business, and just to give a few secrets and tips on how they do it all. Because one other part of motherhood is that bosses these women are, we're still trying to figure out how to get it all done. For us to be able to serve as a platform to help with that, it's ours. (laughs) (laughs) It's very, very important. So uh, we will be relaunching our product line at the beginning of the year. We will be having a few different events. We want to kind of get off of social media and get in real life with people. So right now we're starting out in the Bay Area doing something we call networking, where you're basically networking and walking together. So we just meet up at local local locations and um, meet with some of the women of our nation and kind of get to know them for real. But we have a full lineup for 2017 of some awesome, ambitious 
ideas. And so we're just sitting around with our team, brainstorming and executing daily to get it done. I love that. And I forgot to mention earlier, the amazing thing about both of you ladies is, you know, we, I want to talk a little about how you guys came together, but what we do know is that you have six children between the two of you. You each have three children. We have two. So we got eight kids <laughs> in the background somewhere. Right. Right. This show. Right. So, I mean, I, we always talk about, you know, take it, what's the saying that you say, never take um, lessons from a coach who's never played the game. Right. So I think, you know, the fact that you both ladies have children and have more than, not even, you don't need more than one child and know how to work this, but it's a lot to juggle one child. So having three children and, and bringing those forces together and you have six children amongst the, the both of you, small children, because I think the youngest is one year old. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did we mention that we're homeschooling too? No, you did not mention yeah. that. Yeah. We wow. Are. That's a, the, well, we definitely <laughs> get into this because so, let me tell you something. We try and <laughs> to get rid of this two year old we got in the house right now. So, I can't do it. I need to know how you <laughs> so, so all of the moms, entrepreneurs, everybody listening on this podcast is hashtag no excuses. Right. <laughs> Because if we could get it done, anybody could get it done. And I'm glad you said that, babe, because I feel like that's important for people to see because a lot of times we use our children as excuses. Oh, I can't do this because I got the kids. Or I can't, you know, and I even did that at one point. It was like, well, I can't get on this podcast or I can't get on Periscope today because the kid is making, I got to figure out how to make it all work. Because- Absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, Shahida, she was texting me this morning. She was like, so I've been up since 2 a.m. You know, we're on two different time zones. And it was that 6 a.m. where, you know, it was 8 a.m. my time. She's like, yeah, I've been up since 2 a.m. doing a whole bunch of stuff for the company. And it's like, yeah, no excuses at all. And we just have to. So I had to take a rest- power nap so I can come <laughs> back and be not a zombie for this. <laughs> And then on top of that, one thing that we did leave out, we call Boss Mom Nation the home of Trill Motherhood. So Trill Motherhood yeah, is... I, <laughs> yeah, I love and, that. And, and, the, and the bottom line is this. Wait, and, I want to explain okay, what I'm sorry. Trill Motherhood I'm sorry. is. <laughs> Wait, and I'm in. It's about keeping it true and real to motherhood. You'll see a lot of blogs out there to talk about how beautiful motherhood is. And when I entered this world with my child, the sun was glowing and I went up flawless and every picture is... Amazing, right, and steady, <laughs> light. right? No, no, we break down. We have breakdowns. It's it's expected. So yeah, we want to be able to make sure that we are providing women with an outlet, so where they can feel like, oh, I'm regular because I don't do everything right. Some days my to do list is just like not getting done. Exactly. Tear you know, tear sorry, it tear right. it up. Um, so it's about. Sometimes you got to start over with a fresh breath of some things and it's okay. So we just want to be able to provide that trill community and that trill motherhood to the women of Boss Mom Nation and the women everywhere, mothers everywhere. So that's very important. So it is kind of hard to get everything done. No excuses. But sometimes you just take a quick break and a breather and you move on. A mommy timeout. A mommy timeout. A mommy timeout for sure. And I'm so glad that y'all are doing that because I'm definitely going to be a part of that movement. Because (laughs) I had to learn the hard way. And I'm Damien can chime in. He he had to go tend to the kid. But you know, I had to learn the hard way because I felt bad when I felt like I'm I'm failing at something because I couldn't manage the entrepreneurship and I couldn't manage being a mother. I couldn't, you know, have this cookie cutter, oh, everything is perfect and I'm the perfect mom and after we go and make some cookies and I'm going to work on my business. No, I got this dude screaming in the background, jumping on my back. I got a webinar in 10 minutes. I can't find my papers. I haven't watched since last night. Like, that's my life. But I can't, sh- I was afraid to show that to people. Even now, like when we first started recording the podcast shows and, but when we first started recording, both of our children were home. Our oldest son just started kindergarten, you know, this fall. So he was home too. And we would have both of them yelling in the background. And I was like, oh my God, stop the show. We're going to have to reschedule. And I'm like, you know what? This is my life. This is right. who I am. This is my life. And I have to embrace it. And there's other people that are going through the same exact things as us. And they need to see that you can still be successful and have craziness going on in the background. It's your craziness though. Right. It's and right. it's okay. So exactly. I'm so glad that y'all are doing that, that movement. I'm, I'm loving that. And I will be front line and center waiting for <laughs> that to pop off. Well, and I- side note, side note, one of the main reasons that we... <clears throat> 
started Boss Mom Nation is before we were Boss Mom Nation, we were on social media as an online boutique. Aliyah and I, when our youngest children were babies, <clears throat> we decided that we needed something to do. We were at home, you know, and we felt like style for mothers. There was like no happy medium for when you become a mom and how your style kind of changes. It's like you're not you don't still want to look like you're trying to be this single sexy girl when your your style changes for motherhood, right? Absolutely. So we our plan was to provide clothing that mom still felt, you know, stylish, modest, and just easy to get dressed, right? So long story short, the market got really saturated with online Instagram boutiques and we were like, we need something else that has more meaning. And our number one excuse, our number one excuse for not being able to do this and grow our business was our children. So we felt like we need to do something that incorporates them and that does not make them an excuse. So that's how we came up with the boss mom persona. And then we just restructured our whole entire online business from a online boutique to a real purpose driven community of moms who felt like we felt when we had an idea, but we felt like we couldn't do these things with our children. We always had these deadlines to meet with them and we couldn't progress in our business. So we just put everything to be all about what we do for them because that's the biggest role. And we knew that there were so many women who could relate. So that's how we changed from being an online boutique to being a growing community. That's genius. Uh-huh. That's genius. And I'm, you want to share. I'm sorry. I'm dominating. Go ahead. You know, I'm excited. (laughs) Yes. Tell me. Help. (laughs) Okay. Now he, now he don't want to have nothing to say. He'll come with something to say. Okay. So I want to know what are some of the strategies or what are some of the things that you guys share with your community in regards to how to best juggle? What are some of the things that you ladies do? You're home with your, with your kids. You have small children. Um, so, you know, it's not like when you, you, it's that period, it's that fine line when their babies are like fresh newborn, you, you know, you got at least like maybe two to three hours you could get work in. They're not really moving. Like with our son, when we first started our show, we could stick him in the high chair, put PBS kids on and we were good. Right. Now he's all over the place. He didn't learn how to climb out of the, out of the high chair. Like we don't even use it anymore. So now we have to be more involved with him. We can't just be like, all right, park him here. He'll be all right. So how do you manage your day to day with your children? Well, the first thing is um, do not, I don't set myself up for failure with like itemized time. Like I'm going to do this at this time. Like, no, because with a toddler running around different moods, sometimes he's cool. Sometimes he's not. Sometimes he's witted. Sometimes he's not. (laughs) So I basically just have a list, you know, having a list, a realistic list of the top important things that I need to accomplish for the day. Sometimes it might just be two or three. And whatever time I get them accomplished, as long as it's before I go to sleep at night, then I'm proud of myself. So as far as like a to-do list and all of that, um, I used to be real, I used to make a laundry list, long to-do list. And I would set myself up because I would wake up the next morning and look at it and it would be like only maybe one thing scratched off and then you feel like you didn't do anything Mm -hmm. and, you know, feeling like, and then like we have planners and you have certain times, you're like, I'm going to do this at that time, this at that time, like scratch the times and be realistic about how long each task will take, of course, but don't be so stickler about what time you complete the task. Of course, unless it's like a deadline time for that day, but in general, I try to just keep a revolving list of what's top important and when and whatever time I get it done, I get it done. Because, of course, I have my, my personal to-do list and then my, my children's to-do list, homeschool to-do list. So uh, prioritizing things and then just being realistic about whatever time it happens. It happens as long as it happens before the day is over and it's not too many things on the list to be expected to get done. Exactly. That's great advice. An- another thing for me, my kids are a little older. My youngest is five. So five, seven, and I have a 14 year old. Um, but Sha and I both do this. We include our children in our business. They, they recognize when we're having a business meeting. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so we, we don't try to just like shove them out. And then one day they'll see that we're, have this mega company, we include them and give them an idea of what we're doing. I mean, I've made my kids package orders before, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they work. And so yeah, and they know. keep them busy. 
We've, it, they, we've done so well with including them in our brand and the development of it to the point where when I'm out, like we have the our badges, our boss mom badges. We have to send you some. Yes, please. Uh, yes, we will. Um, and so my daughter will be like, Mom, we were in, in Trader Joe's yesterday. Wherever we go, Mom, make her a boss mom. You got a card, Mom? Give <laughs> her a card. You got a button. She's like, like United them. Off, <laughs> button off and give it to her. Like anytime my child sees a woman with children, she recognizes her as a boss mom and she uses the word make her a boss mom mom. <laughs> oh my like, I'm the official like boss mom maker. Like yeah. I have coined you the boss mom. <laughs> well that that that's amazing what you what you ladies are doing because first of all, you're not allowing them to be indoctrinated into this world of building somebody else's dream. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So you're you're helping them continue to hustle and grind for their last name. So that's awesome. Right. right. And yeah. even, even with the, um, the women of our nation, I, th- I think this was one of your original questions. Even for our, on our social media, we're very big on keeping it true. Mm-hmm. I think we, we do show a lot of our behind the scenes moments or just kind of give them a behind the scenes synopsis of what's really going on. And it resonates with our, with our followers. They always chime in like, oh yeah, me too. You know, so, I mean, like, recently I put up a picture of, um, we were walking somewhere downtown. It was a great photo, but one of my daughters was, like, bawling her eyes out, crying, and it was really because she didn't want to leave from playing, and I really had to set up this whole little trick to get her in the mood for actually leaving, you know, and once I put that out there, everybody was like, oh, yeah, I need to try that trick, because mm-hmm. it's, it's tricks to go along oh, with yes. this mama, right? <laughs> We have tricks. You have to play them so they do not play you. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and some other blogs that may be like, no, you just take the time and you talk to them and you rub their back. We'd be like, no, <laughs> I don't do none of that. I, this, <laughs> this is what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Keeping but it real. Keeping it, right, keeping it real. But you see how she put the flip on it? So here we have mm-hmm. this amazing photo, awesome photo. One of our photographer fans, she tagged along with us one day and she took these great photos. But we wanted to put that caption, a trill caption, to bring it back to reality. Like, don't look at this beautiful photo and not understand all that went into trying to capture this moment or exactly. these moments. So let's be honest and not mm-hmm. because. You know, I'm sure us as mothers, we've all fall victim to scrolling people's feeds and getting lost in their fairy tales or whatever it is that they show us. And we get lost and we start to compare. And, and yeah. then, you know, we got to bring ourselves back. So we don't want women to ever get lost in our feed comparing. We want you to get lost in our feed and feel bet feel great about whatever wherever you are so you might scroll and see one picture and it's amazing but you'll read the caption and it'll bring you back to reality about where we really are and what it took to get this i'm so glad that you said that because we talk about this all the time everybody's on instagram i I feel like instagram is the world of make believe Mm -hmm. because all you see is all the good you don't see the bloopers you don't see the you know the trill you know Mm -hmm. and i really appreciate you ladies for that because the bottom line is that's why people feel that they cannot succeed because they always feel that they got to go to Instagram or some other social media outlet to get validation for what they're doing or not doing. Validation, yeah. So I definitely appreciate what you, you know, what you ladies are doing because I get tired of looking on Instagram because everybody like, you know, I mean, I could go into a whole bunch. There's all these vixens. <laughs> I'm like, what do you right. do all day? Right. You got two and three million followers. Like, I'm not hey, hating. on Instagram. That's what like, they do all really? day. Really? Like, right. I mean, do I need to get a six pack and just get two million right. followers? Like, like what value you? do you deliver, right? What like, value? We're, there we're you at go. a stage where we want to feel like, first of all, social media eats up a lot of our valuable time. So we appreciate the fact that you scrolled on our page. You took the time to look and read our caption. We want you to leave from our our page with something, whether it's a little hint of inspiration, a new tip or something. So the time, the second minute, two minutes, whatever you spent on our page, if you don't leave with something, then we're wasting your time. We're wasting our time and it's just a waste of time. Yeah, I like that. And, And to be very honest with you, that's exactly how I found out about you ladies, just by... I don't know how I landed on your page, but I did. And I 
took some time because you know you get sucked in. But I actually was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta find out what these ladies represent. I'm loving their feed, and it was, I mean, your page, your feed is is gorgeous. It's aesthetically beautiful, and you know I'm all about branding, so I'm automatically drawn to it. Like, oh, this is beautiful. But like you said, when you actually read the caption, you see the pictures. These women are hot. They are sexy. If you haven't seen them, they are gorgeous. You would not look at them and think that they have. I don't want to say that they have three kids because what does a person with three kids look like? But you know what I'm trying to say. Right. Like, no, I know. You, y'all look like boss moms. Right. And so then you read and you feel a sense of comfort as a person who is a boss, who is a mom, who is making power moves. You feel a sense of comfort. You feel a sense of belonging. Like, oh, I like these ladies because they, they mm-hmm. I can relate to them. And that's right. what it's all about. So that's the value that I took. And I felt like the message that you guys were sharing was a message that I felt like other women needed to hear, mm-hmm. other women needed to see because we, we're constant. And men, sorry, because he's a dad. He's not a, he's a boss dad. Yes. Oh, you want to see the boss dad? Yeah. Um, Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. (laughs) But, you know, as parents, it's a struggle. It's a constant struggle. And I just, like I said earlier, from my own experiences, I was beating myself up. And I even had a bout where I was, I I, I didn't want to accept it as as it was, but it was depression because I was like, these kids are driving me mad. I want to slap them, but I know I can't. And it's not their fault because I can't manage my life. And why am I trying to fit everything in this box, in this perfect mold? Like, like you said, I might have a to-do list and I might get to one thing. I might not get to no thing on that right. list. And that's okay. And okay. and we need to know that that's okay. Mm-hmm. And we right. need to know not to look into the fantasies of what everybody else is posting on social media and glorifying their life. They're only giving you what they want you to see. The fairy tale that, you know, or that five minutes of perfectness when the rest of their day is, is drama filled. You don't know that. Exactly. But I love that you guys share an inspiring message and you keep it trail 100%. So I love that. Well, also too, you know, for all of the boss moms and the boss moms in the making, you know, you know, we, we, we have children, we have responsibilities. And one of the biggest things that I encourage a lot of the boss moms not to do, stop making yourself wrong. If you don't get something done that day, you just didn't get it done. Stop. And, and then, and then to make matters worse, then you run into social media and checking right. on these other people. <laughs> right. What they doing. Right. Stop seek, first of all, stop seeking validation because it's your purpose and your vision and where you want your life to be. So stop seeking validation. Stop making yourself wrong. Live in your reality and find a way to make it, you know, to make it work. Like a little quick tip, tidbit, you know, our son was running around. I just gave him the Dre beats and the phone and he's good. <laughs> right? So maybe you right? could try that. Oh gosh, we don't know what this kid is listening to. My <laughs> son loves trap music. I don't know why. He's, he's a Georgia grown but boy. But that kid, if you put on a bass, a TI, a two chains, oh, he goes berserk. And that's what he does. Our kids too. Listen, to get together. Have a party. <laughs> trap music involved <laughs> all the time. Yeah, yeah. It works. <laughs> oh, it, listen, I'm not complaining. It just hey. as long as there's no curses, because I don't need him going to yeah. school with somebody like eh, eh, but, but, and the, right. me crazy. But the disclaimer is, when they get too quiet, you got to go check on them. I'll be right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so. I wanted to ask you ladies a question because we get different responses. A lot of people are talking about work-life balance. And, you know, some people feel like you have to find a happy medium where you have work-life balance. Some people feel like work-life balance doesn't really exist, especially when you have kids. So what is your view on that? Who's going to go first? Aaliyah, I choose you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, finding I saw work. you thinking. <laughs> You did, you did. Uh, Okay, finding work-life balance. Honestly, it's just about, well, on my planner, I do have a bunch of time slots. So I have a a big old to-do list at the beginning of the week. And I try to physically put everything onto my calendar. And then I realized that four things are going to get done this week. (laughs) On the beginning of the day, I have a day's goal. So if I get that one thing accomplished for the day, that's very, very good to me. Um, like I said before, I incorporate my children a lot with what I do. So they tag along, but they get an idea. Like I'm on a business call or on a meeting or anything like that. Before, like we mentioned, Sha and I were homeschooling. So homeschooling just kind of gives us a slight advantage too, because we know how to, well, we're trying to figure out to, how to put so much education within a certain set of days, but then have field trip days. 
you know what I'm saying? Or have library days. So a lot of what we do, this is always five times. Sometimes it's, it's just sitting up late at night and getting what you need to get done after mommy time is over because kids like to hug. They mm-hmm. like to hug. Yes. <laughs> they want you to read the books. So, <laughs> five more books. Uh-huh. Another book. They want to give yeah. you a kiss. My youngest, she's always trying to kiss on me. Uh, so honestly, it's just sometimes you just got to take it to the end of the day yeah. and get the rest wing of your it. work done. Yeah. Yeah. Wing it. Do you want to chime in, Sha? Yes, I do. So I feel like work-life balance is to me. <laughs> like there is no balance. Like let's just talk about what balance is. <laughs> balance is like everything is perfectly leveled. This side is perfectly even with that side. Like when you think about being a mom and a wife and having a, a business, which is a baby too, like how in the heck can you get that perfect balance? Like I don't see how it's ever achieved. So um, I don't really believe in work-life balance. I believe that we have to understand what parts of our lives need the most attention at a particular season of our Mm -hmm. lives. So we might be in a season where work is cool, your business is at a good spot, so you need to just kind of maintain that spot and give more attention to life, your home and family life. For example, we are at a transition stage with Boston Nation. We just added all these women to our team, which is going to be great for us because it takes some of the workload off of our brand being able to grow and we can give the attention we need to homeschool because I'm in a season where like last night at 2 a.m. I wasn't just up researching or doing something for Boston Nation. I was trying to figure out how I'm going to get this homeschool life together Mm -hmm. so that I can share with Aaliyah and we can get our children acclimated on track because this is our first time ever doing it. It's so much information out there and we are going to be great at this homeschool thing because we want mothers who may consider it down the line to be able to use our journey as a resource and be able to use us as trial and error. So I'm in a season where homeschool is my top priority in the sense of what I'm spending my time getting organized. So I feel like picking and choosing and understanding what needs the most attention at this time in your life and balancing that lane, opposed to trying to balance work, life, mom, like it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. So that's kind of just what I've told myself. And I think being honest about where you are in your life and what needs the most attention, then you don't even really worry about balance. Like you just wing it, you do it, you figure it out and figure out the flow. Let's say a work life flow. Wow, there you go. <laughs> so I'm it. down with the flow, not so much the balance. Yeah, yeah I like I that flow. You. I like the flow too. I agree. Write I that down, Sha. I like that. Yeah, let me write that down. <laughs> and, and also too like <laughs> in my notes in my phone. <laughs> when when you, when you talk when you use the word balance, right? Again, mm-hmm. it goes back to wow, I want to have a work life balance with my family, my business and whatever. And then when it doesn't happen, oh, I'm not balancing anything. And then you start feeling bad and you start making yourself wrong and it can right. so many different things, not getting things done. And then the excuses start to compile on each other. Right, so, right. you know, I mean, I, I definitely like what you shared, Sha, because, I mean, it's, you got to prioritize what's important at that time. You can exactly. still have a set schedule, but let's face it, as mm-hmm. entrepreneurs and, and having kids, I mean, come yes. on. Yes. Things, so many things happen at once. Sometimes things don't happen. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's just being flexible and being able to prioritize what's important at that time. Yes, so did absolutely. you ladies ever have a moment in life, you know, where you felt like, I don't know why I'm doing this. This is not going to work. Or, you know, you felt like you felt like giving up. You know, one thing you can't give up motherhood. You stuck with it, you know, but did you ever feel like you would have to make a choice and, and it, it put you in a situation where you weren't happy in your space? Because we all, you know, we start these things. We love these things and they're amazing, but life happens, right? Things right. happen, life happens, kids happen, whatever happens. And now you're, you're kind of like, what was I thinking? You know, right. you're, you're taking on so much. So have you ever had that feeling where you felt like you took on way too much that you could choose? Yes, okay. yes. So I recently just came out of that stage before I had my baby, my third child, I've, I owned and operated a salon, hair salon for about six years. So that when I opened that salon, my first child was only about eight months old. 
And when I, it's funny, when I look back at it, I'm like, what was I thinking opening up a full service salon with an eight month old? Like I was real ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> so think that I was going to balance all of this and people. So long story short, when I was pregnant with my third child, I started to realize that having children, being a mom and a wife wasn't working well with my time and being a salon owner and a hairstylist. Because as you know, as a hairstylist, you're working all kinds of hours. Mm -hmm. I'm putting a client under the dryer, running to pick my daughter up from school, bringing her back with me to do a couple of clients, then go get my son and then go home in traffic to try to cook dinner for my husband to come home and eat after he's been working all day. I was mm-hmm. like, okay, wait, no, gas. Let me take a break and see. Uh, this is not life. And, when, right. and, I, and here I am, an entrepreneur. And to me, it's never good when, you're, when your business becomes a burden to you. And I felt like we become entrepreneurs for freedom. And my salon was, I was becoming, it was becoming to be like a burden. So I had made the decision that once I had my third child, I was going to close my salon because I wasn't able to give it what it needed to grow without me. So it was better for me to just kind of close it and give more, and give more um, attention to Boss Mom Nation. This is my passion. So I had something else to dive into that allowed me to be wherever I was, not standing behind a chair providing a service. So, you know, it was hard because I had that business for a while and it's an industry that I'm passionate about. But at the same time, it made more sense for me as a wife and a mother to be able to give the attention to my family. As we know, our children will be young for a very short time. Absolutely. So it was, these are the important years for me to not be rushing them around, having them in the salon all hours of the night. So I wanted a more uh, solid foundation for my home. So I decided to close my salon. Now it's been over a year now that it's been closed, but that was a big decision for me, but I felt it was like a weight off my shoulders too, because yeah. it just wasn't fitting seamlessly with my lifestyle. So that was a big decision. And I'm very happy about it. I, I just wanted to touch on that, Shah. Thanks for sharing that, because first and foremost, you touched on a lot of things. When you're an entrepreneur, everything is not going to be perfect, even if you don't have kids. So people always find some kind of excuse. So as in when becoming an entrepreneur, you have to act in imperfection. That's number one, whether it work, works or not. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you made a point about the salon, having it for six years. You can be passionate about, about something, but that might not necessarily be your purpose. Right. See, now, all of a sudden now, with boss moms, right, You mm-hmm. find, this is your purpose. So you're mm-hmm. finding a way to make it work while having three children, homeschooling them, having a husband, and still making it work. See, so that's the thing I want the listeners to understand that Part of what you do has to be purpose driven, has to be part of your why. I mean, yeah, even, right. if make, even if you're passionate about it, it's making a lot of money, great, but it's going to come a point in time where it may become a burden because mm-hmm. it's not your purpose and why you, and it's not helping you really make a difference in the world. Right. Yeah. Right. And you have to evolve. You know, everything, right. everything has its season in life, and that's okay, especially as moms. You know, you have to be. A chameleon, you got to change with the situation, you know, because your kids, they wake up and like I think Sha said it earlier, you know, maybe one day they're with it, one day they not, one day you cool, one day you not. I got to go <laughs> flow so that we can have a happy life. Otherwise, right. somebody's going to get hurt up in this piece. Right. So you got to, you've got to learn how to adjust. And sometimes that means making heavy decisions. That's a major decision to have a salon for six years and decide that you want to close the doors. That's a major decision. But like Damien said, you know, it doesn't mean that you're not passionate about it. It just means that now your purpose has changed to yeah, being it, something else. And, and that it, doesn't make it wrong. And it doesn't mean that it didn't, you failed. It just wasn't working for your current situation. And so right. that's a lot of, a lot, uh, another thing I wanted to touch on. A lot of people hold on to stuff too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sometimes you just got to walk away and regroup like you did and get mm-hmm. your life together. Right. right. Including your nine to five. One other thing just to kind of like touch on, on that subject is that Sha and I have been in business since 2012 and we've hit certain we, we've hit different milestones of our business but it was about being able 
to like really keep it real about where we were always seeking mentorship. I don't think a lot of people seek mentorship. People be like, they're on their own way. Like I got the next best thing and it's going to pop. They don't want to hear anybody outside criticism. They don't want to get into focus groups or any real parts of business because right. we already know. And even along the line, Shia and I, we started out selling a product. You know, business do not succeed by just selling a product. They succeed by building a brand. Mm-hmm. And we had to get a slap on the wrist, take a few steps back and started developing a brand. And when you start building your brand, you, you have to identify certain things like your, your purpose and your mission. And from there, that's when you start figuring out why you're doing this. And mm-hmm. from there you realize, oh, I can't even sell this. Oh, I can't do this. You know, so like even right now, Sean and I, we're not selling the product at the moment, but we're building our brand. And it's becoming stronger and stronger. I mean, you have, we, have people, we have people that email us and they're like, I want to join Boss Mom Nation. And really, it's kind of like, yes. all right, just, just follow us on social media. We buy into stuff like, uh, I don't know what to tell you. What you know? <laughs> uh, okay, you're in. <laughs> you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Ladies, it's just that easy, all right? And right. <laughs> I just want now, to anyway. official box mom maker over there, like Shahida, come lighter, you know? <laughs> I, absolutely, Aliyah. I, l- I like what you said, too, because you said you've been, y'all yeah, been trying this thing. I, I don't like the word using trying. You've been doing this thing since 2012, Developing. regardless of what has, you know, what monkey wrenches or whatever has been thrown at you. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate that because so many people give up. Mm-hmm. Right when they're, right where they're at the cusp of, making a difference in the world and taking mm-hmm. their business to another level and their brand to another level, mm-hmm. they give up. You know, mm-hmm. again, they probably going back to Instagram and, and, and <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? Because so. a lot of companies look like they blow up overnight. And if you want to keep it real, um, Boss Mom Nation has only, as a company, has only existed since one year now, right? Mm-hmm. October. I mean, I think yeah. even our, our followers on social media, people have fell out because they were down with what we used to do. Um, and now serve no purpose for them but that's cool right Sha? right like, yeah yeah we have a new um, we have a more of an authentic organic the the right audience for what our mission is now has started to evolve and um uh, one little quick tidbit at one point Sha and i we had got a guy that was very interested in being an investor for us and he was going to put some money into our company it, it but it was not serving our purpose. He had all these different, he didn't even like being on a business call with us with children being in the background. Yeah. But part of our brand, as we were developing ourselves, we realized that motherhood is what we are. You know right. I mean? Yeah. So yeah. We have to figure out, Hey, do we want to give up this money <laughs> and keep on with our own purpose and figure out, do we want to do what we set out to do? And yeah, we gave up that money. No regrets. No and, regrets. And I appreciate that too because I his, y'all for that. here's the thing. And we, you know, we've been in that situation as well where investors come and then they want to, you know, you create this vision, baby, and watch, mm-hmm. it, watch it grow. And then all of a sudden come, someone comes and says, hey, I'll give you X amount of dollars, but oh, I want 90% say right. what you do or you gotta right. yeah so you gotta say wait, what yeah, you so you gotta say right and, and oh you can't have no kids it. crying in the background oh really you oh, really can, you can keep your 90 you percent the wrong people and, and keep it pushing <laughs> yeah, there's, there's another thing i wanted to say too it takes 10 years to become an overnight success right okay right 10 yeah, so years to become nine an overnight. To yeah so <laughs> all right Comfortable, right? Yeah. Comfortable. If, if, if you want to go on social media and believe the hype, go up. Uh, you know, do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I, my son is in here listening to his trap music and wants to show us his moves. Okay, so, so I didn't even ask this in the beginning of the interview, and I said that I was going to. So you gotta, you guys gotta tell the audience how you guys met. Where did where did your partnership come into play? Who's gonna tell you or me? You can tell. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, is extremely <laughs> excited about this story. Let's let's hear it. Okay, well, I, I'm I am very excited about our story because I feel like it's 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 part of our it factor between the two of us. Like I always tell Aaliyah, like you know, when we're on social media and we, you know, part of our thing is to share other women, but we share enough balance of her and I. And I'm like, it can't. I always tell her, it can't be too much me. It has to be you and I. Like we're a package. Like. People love us better together, right? So, you know, Ali and I, we've been friends since our mothers were pregnant together and were friends. 
Oh, so wow. we've been friends. We've been in school since preschool all the way. We went to different schools. When did we split schools? Like in high school, we high school. split different schools. And um, we actually lived in different cities to where when I would call her, it would cost back in the day when we had landlines. Yes. <laughs> Our mothers banned us from talking to each other because we ran up the phone bill <laughs> because we, we were no longer seeing each other every day at school. So we were like talking endlessly and we couldn't talk anymore. But that's all going off to the left. But we've known each other since preschool, basically. And, you know, we've had times in our lives where we weren't as close and when we were close, but we would go because we were doing different things. I moved to Atlanta. She was she came and went to college in Atlanta. But we've, you know, we've been back and forth doing different stages of our lives, but we're sisters more than friends. So we've always, you know, when you have a sister, your sister could go and move away, but she's your sister. So it doesn't matter how often you talk to her. Right. So, but we've been, we're, we're family. We've just, I mean, I don't, I can go on and on about Aaliyah and I, and the coolest thing about us is that our mothers, when we were younger, our mothers started a business together. Aaliyah's mom had an idea for a children's clothing line. My mom is a designer slash seamstress. So my mom, she basically brought my mom on to design the line. So now let's say this. I didn't even remember that story until a couple of years ago. I remember going to Aaliyah's house with my mom all the time. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what we were going for. <laughs> Aaliyah brought it up to me a couple of years ago. Like, wow. yeah, you didn't know? And then she like pulled out this old school business card of her mom. And she was like, yeah, our moms were building a brand together. So, wow. um, and due to unfortunate circumstances, Aaliyah's father passed away when we were young and in the middle of her mom and my mom creating that, it basically kind of just didn't see, go get, you know, go all the way through. But it's cool to us that they started something together and here we are doing something even more major together years, years and years down the line. And we were you know, visiting and hanging out with each other while our mothers were building a brand and we didn't know it. That's amazing. That is definitely something y'all have to make sure y'all mention in y'all story because where does that happen at? You know, like you, you grow up together, you separate, you come together, your parents actually started, you know, doing some of the same things that you guys are doing. And that's great that, you know, your parents have that entrepreneurial blood in them because that's infusing them on you too, to make an even bigger and better brand and all the resources that we have available to us now versus when our parents were doing things, just let you know that, you know, there's no limit to what you ladies are going to do with this amazing community and this amazing brand. So I'm excited. I'm excited for that. So we're going to wrap up the interview, but I first got to ask you guys two questions that I ask every single person that's on the show. The first one is easy. Are you reading any books right now? Or can you tell us what your favorite book is? Oh my God. I am reading. Just pull it out the side. Wall Street Money Machine. Okay. It's about trading stocks, preferably stock options. I'm just really big on having multiple streams of income. Yeah. Uh, That's my past life. (laughs) Wow. My past life. Working in... um, Oh, the stocks. I'm like, what do you mean, honey child? We we want multiple streams of income. That ain't nobody past life. That was one of my... uh, Quit your nine to five things, you know. Um, well, you worked in investment and in trading and yeah, settlements yeah, yeah. and banking industry. Okay. And I got some dog tickets about that stuff. Oh, gosh. I need to know. Um, <laughs> also, I'm not into fiction books. I know, like, a, a lot of women are into... I'm just not. And I wasn't really a big reader. Like, I'll read stuff that I, I needed to know. Like, I read a book on branding. But, child, that's our researcher. That's like my little Google part of my business like shy knows if she don't know give her an hour <laughs> see that's right. what i like yeah I bounce ideas off of each other it's always you know in and i have to ask this question so we're going to ask this real quick because having a business and working with a close person somebody in general but especially somebody that you're close to it is tough so do you guys ever feel like you're bumping heads or you have one idea and Sha wants to do this, but Aaliyah's like, nah, we ain't doing that. 
because I can tell you working with my husband, I love waking up every day to this man and I love working with him, but boy, do we drive each other crazy just this morning. I was like, yeah, I want to do this. And he was like, no, I don't agree. And I was like, well, I don't care because this is what I'm going to do, but we're in business together. So we have to come to some middle ground and we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things, but we have to find that middle ground where we both can agree, but it can be tough, especially when not only we're business partners, but we're marriage partners where, you know, we have kids together. It's, it's bigger than, you know, just a business. So do you guys ever have any of those challenges or do, can you give some advice to somebody who is, has a partner or is maybe considering going into business with a partner but has a little bit of hesitation? We bump heads. No, well, we, let me say this. No, we don't really bump heads. We pull each other coattails. But one thing that we've done early on, we've identified our own lanes within the company. So we do. And I mean, it's, it's, I love an Excel spreadsheet. I love document building. I love... Aesthetically, I'm good with certain elements of our company. I hate social media. Like, Sha has really built our community. She has built the nation of Boss Mom Nation, you know? So um, we just both have our own lanes. Like, if, if you're two experts in the same thing, it's, it's, it's going to be hard. You know, I don't know how to advise you on that. But as far as us, we have been able to identify our own lanes, and we do well in them. So when we do have an idea, we think about it for real. Like, what will it take? And can we get it done? You know, so we have, a, we have a little standing joke where if it's <laughs> something that we're both trying to figure out and say it's her thing, I'm like, oh, this is not my department. Not my department. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good for it. It's not my department. You feel like you're on sales. I'm on marketing. You figure good it luck out. figuring that out. <laughs> right. And that's also another another way of, that people could do that too is create a team charter. You know, like I mean, sit down and hash everything out. And put it in writing. And when somebody start acting out of line and crazy, <laughs> we could just refer to Exhibit A, and right. we can move. refer to the papers. This is right. Right. This is my department. <laughs> I got the last say so, and right. it's getting done. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. And we do that. So since we respect, since we're both, we know that we're both equally passionate about. We collectively have the exact same vision for where this brand is going. So we're able to dominate our lanes and we trust each other in those lanes. So if we agree, but if it's my lane or if it's her lane, then each of us know when we get the final say, but we take each other's opinion or tips into consideration. But ultimately, yeah, we've mastered staying in our lane for the overall vision of the brand. And then too, let me say, Aaliyah is amazing at... Like me, because sometimes I get real passionate and I get real rough and I get real demanding and all of this. And she knows how to just chill and pay me no mind. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> like the average person would probably think that I can get disrespectful or rude, but I'm just, I'm an artist and I'm passionate about my shit, you know? <laughs> and she shout gets out, it. About do. Right? Shout out. You know, but she gets it and she leaves me alone and she lets me be. And then she just is like, okay, whatever, Shahida, this is what we're doing. It's all good. Yeah. So it's a great little thing that we have going. It's totally a blessing. And that's why it works. That's it works. exactly why it works. Okay. So my last question. Wait, hold on. I need to shout out my books. I got books. Oh, oh I forgot about your book, Sha. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Go. Sha, let it go. Okay. okay, so I am reading, right now I'm reading two books. One is called Launching a Leadership Revolution, um, and it is by Chris Brady, Mastering the Five Levels of Influence, because as influencers online, I think that some people consider themselves an influencer or, um, or leader based on likes or followers, but really you're not a leader or an influencer unless you really know how to lead and influence and have studied and have watched and been mentored. So um, I don't have a particular mentor, but I read a lot of books. So I'm really studying how to be able to deliver value and be a credible leader in my lane. Um, and then another thing that I'm really big on, um, I'm, you guys are probably familiar with Dr. Boyce Watkins. Mm -hmm. I just got hip to him. My husband mm -hmm. went to a seminar of his that was in our city like a month ago, and he brought back this book. It called, it's called It Takes a Village to Raise the Bar, A New Paradigm for Black America. So I'm reading this. Mm. Really, and he touches, on a, he touches a lot on the importance of homeschooling our children and preparing for the next generation through our children um, and, you know, creating Black a new Wall paradigm. Street, baby. 
Yes. And, and my, uh, listen, I, I love everything that Dr. Uh, Boyce Watkins is doing, but he going he gonna to need to answer my email because I need to get him on my podcast. Stop playing. Yes. I'm Dr. Gonna need Dr. Dr. Watkins, and, and I, hey, if you listening, <laughs> You need to you need to respond to the email. We're gonna need you in the building. We'll email them too for you. We're gonna email yeah. them too for you. Please then. do. <laughs> and, and then another thing I wanted to say too, and I rep- I you know, some of the listeners probably wonder why we asked the question of what books are you reading? We asked that question uh systematically because you have to understand that entrepreneurship is a journey, it's not a destination. So you have to continue to be a student of, of the game in order to continue to make a difference in people's lives. Absolutely. So if you ain't reading, you better get the audio book in or something. Something. Because there are no excuses. You got to continue to be a student of the game. It is a journey, not a destination. Right. Mm-hmm. Preach. Yeah. I'm calling that poor man out on this hey, show. Dr. Watkins, we're watching you. <laughs> we're, right? we're all watching you. <laughs> okay, so my last question, each of you have to answer is, I want you to tell the listeners one thing that they would be surprised to know about you. Oh, okay. Did you see like their faces? <laughs> I need like a 30 second. You want me to sing five? some old music yeah. while you collect your thoughts? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, does it have to be about us individually? Can it be about the both of us together? Mine is about the If y'all want to do a combo, I'll let you do a combo. No, Aaliyah still have to give her own answer. My oh, answer is <laughs> Oh, mine just includes her. Mine includes her. Okay, that's fine. Okay. okay, so people would be probably surprised to know that Aaliyah and I can hold a complete conversation in Jay-Z and Drake rap lyrics. <laughs> yeah. Almost wow. every conversation we have includes a hip hop rack lyric. Like, yeah, fine. like we don't go a day without <laughs> throwing out a relevant Jay Z, Drake, sometime a little Beyonce infused in there every day, all day. It's always on point. It's always relevant. We always get it, and it works. It's how hey, we communicate. I'm not a businessman. I'm a I'm business. a businessman. Yeah. They better okay. know. Let me handle my business. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, look at that, son. <laughs> yeah. Shout out, shout out to BK. I like that. that. <laughs> hey, Jig, I need you on the show two okay. hours. Listen. <laughs> All right, Aaliyah, are you, are you coming up with your own or are you going <laughs> to ride you know? with that one? I'm going to ride with that. But honestly, I think I kind of put it all out there. If you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, it's... You, oh, yeah. If you, fo- oh, if you follow her on Facebook, Facebook, then you really know her. You know, <laughs> I follow her on Facebook, and I'm like, <laughs> well, I, I think Aaliyah's answer would have just been simple. I keep yeah. it trip. I keep yeah. it trip. There all you go. Time. All the time. Okay. So speaking of social media, tell the good people out there where they can find you guys. Okay, you can find us at Boss Mom Nation for our community page, and then my personal page is. At Boss Mom Shop, S S M O M S H A H. That's my personal page on Instagram and on Facebook. You don't really want to follow me on Facebook. I'm a little boring on there. I just feed everything from Instagram to Facebook. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Um, (laughs) On Instagram, I'm Boss Mom Aaliyah. So B O S S M O M Aaliyah A. A-L-I-Y-A-H, Boss Mama Leah, and on Facebook, I am Aaliyah Muhammad, A-L-I-Y-A-H, Muhammad, M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D. Nice. I'll make sure I put that in the show notes if you didn't hear that because of the kids screaming in the background. I will make sure that the people- We love the babies. We love the babies. Right. (laughs) And- um, we talked earlier about how people can become part of the Boss Mom Nation. I know you guys have a, a free offer on your website. Can, so can you take a couple of seconds to tell the audience how they can get that and what that is? Yes, we have a, a free guide to crushing goals while raising babies. It's some of our quick tips so women can figure out how to infuse the life of raising their babies and get some of their goals accomplished daily. So just go to our website, sign up for our newsletter, and you'll be receiving that in 54321 in your email box. Nice. Yeah. 
Ladies, thank you both so much. I immensely enjoyed speaking with the both of you and learning more about the Boss Mom Nation. I am excited to see what's going to kick off for you guys in 2017. I most definitely will be a part of that and promoting you guys. And I'm a Boss Mom, so of course I'm going to be a part of Boss Mom Nation. Thank you so much for being on the show. And we want to have you guys back on in the future to talk about some other things that happen in life because I know you guys have something to chime in on. So yes. We will look to see you guys back on the show in the future, but thank you, thank you so much for all the nuggets you shared with the audience. I know they definitely took some valuable things away from this podcast interview. We thank you for you. having us. We're so excited. You you have officially popped our podcast cherry. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> I was going to say something very crass, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> cherries. <laughs> We're going to keep it clean. Okay. So, all right. Well, I said thanks. So thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate you guys. And you guys make sure that you follow these ladies on social media. They'll be back on the show. If you have any questions that we didn't ask, you can definitely send us an email at hello at quitchin9to5academy.com. We'll make sure we get the questions to the ladies so they can answer them on their social media. So make sure you follow them. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. This episode of the Quit Your 9 to 5 show is brought to you by the Rich Life Society. Join our exclusive club and get access to our private resource vault of our best content, resources, downloads, interviews, and masterclasses. Fresh new content updated every month. Visit quityour9to5academy.com for details. Thanks so much for listening to the Quit Your 9 to 5 podcast with your hosts, Tamisha and Damian Duncan. We'll catch you next time. Bye.